everybody, it's Sammy Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today I'm going to be coming to you, showing you how to do day nine. Yes, it actually is day nine. I got a little confused yesterday, <laughs> but today is day nine. Nine! I'm almost out of fingers, but that's where we're at. I hope you guys are excited to do this. If you want to see the video about how we gridded this in, or drew this, or our value studies, or any other part of the extra help for beginners, and for artists that are on this journey for us, check the link below. It'll have materials, exchanges, and if you follow it, it will give you two extra videos if those are not skills that you currently have. So everything about this is making sure you can do this yourself on your own. We put in all that extra work just for you because it matters to us that you paint. You guys are, oh, on the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He's not something I easily forget. I have no idea why I did that. He's going to help me do this with by switching cameras and making sure you guys are in the action, let's just hop on in. Okay. Since I'm all being weird and awkward today. Are you? Ooh. All right. Well, a little. So uh, I'm starting out with kind of a phthalo turquoise background. I really like this. I'm going to be playing with it there. I took, changed a little bit from its original color scheme because I felt like it would just be stronger. I got to remember when I wear headbands that my ear, my, my mic doesn't want to be on then. My mic says no. So I think the first part I'm going to do is lay in this really gorgeous background. Mm -hmm. And if you were not aware on how to make a uh, phthalo turquoise, this is a primary blue. The base pigment actually is phthalo pigment. Um, so it will work for this. And this is a phthalo green. And you just sort of mix them almost to a one-to-one -one mixture. And I'm using an artist knife here. Uh, this is actually from my Art Sherpa line of brushes. Um, but you can find these anywhere, and I have even seen people use uh, loyalty cards. <laughs> so don't feel limited in what you can do by what you have right now. Hold on a second, guys. My I may have to take my ears off or something. Oh, no. We'll see how this goes. I just don't think it was on. We'll see. I'm, I'm <laughs> If a I bad... suddenly go away, let John know that my uh, mic fell off. I can just make her disappear. I can just... What? What? Where? What? So okay. I can make it disappear on the screen. Don't do that. So you can fix your mic if you needed to. I think they can see me fix the mic. It's Hello. not uh, scandalous. We're I'm going to be doing a darker value up here and a lighter value down here. I think I'm going to be working this with one of my number eights. I got one of my little number eights here. It's so weird. I know I washed them, but they're all feeling stiff today. So I'm going to use this number eight. So darker up here and then coming down lighter down here. So let's start out here. I still want to, even though it's darker... I will be adding a bit of white to it just to pick up some of the turquoise. Sometimes the turquoise doesn't really show unless you have a bit of the white into it so you can see the, the values and space of that turquoise. And this is really going to help our red pop on the piece. Almost this background barely shows, doesn't it, over our, our uh, already painted in turquoise ground. And that's really the point of this. If your paints are transparent, if um, you're painting with like maybe student paint, doing a ground like this can really help you. I'm just picking up the pure pigment and just working it up here, being very loose about it. You know, just making sure that we've got some valuation. And then down into here, I definitely, definitely am going to play into this range. A little bit lighter, see? And I think that's going to look lovely against our fabulous, delightful red. How are you guys feeling today? Good. I can't believe we're on day nine. It's amazing to see what everybody's painting. Been really enjoying that. Hopefully you guys are going out on to Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and searching Acrylic April to see what maybe some other artists are doing. Get a little experiment. I did a little bit of a dark, like a darker value right there, and now I'm sort of blending this in, lightly brushing back and forth with my brush. It's keeping it loose, but this little effect is helping me achieve maybe a softness in the bokeh, if that makes sense. Here we go. Come right here and up along this part. Very pretty. So you feeling good here today, Sherpa? I think I am. You know, it's day nine. I didn't know it was day eight, so that's funny. Still recovering from that. 
We will put this again on Facebook as a premiere for people that are at work. So if you're catching this on your lunch break, just to peek in, but you're wishing you had some of the live chat fun, those are going to be on at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Facebook page. Gotcha. So if you ever miss one and you just want to be able to chat with your friends and watch one, that's when that will happen. I didn't want people to miss out because they were at work. I mean, you got to buy art supplies. Mm-hmm. So you shouldn't be penalized for that. <laughs> I don't know. So you can see I'm just creating this kind of really exciting little background. I find that super fun. I'm going to rinse this out really, 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 really well. And the reason I'm going to do that is I don't want any of this green in my paint. In fact, I might go so far as to really change water because I want my brights to be bright. Now, where I'm going to have very bright, bright, colors I may come in with just a little bit of white just at first to lighten parts of this so that when I come back with a much more light transparent color it's exaggerated a titch and I'm doing this All right and we've got one kind of right here and this will also help me later when I'm talking about these very bright pops of light coming through these delicate little flowers if you're painting a very student paint, mm -hmm. this is going to be critical for you to get those results. I haven't had a chance in a long time to wish a little brush a happy birthday. Oh, do we have a little brush birthday? I would. We missed it by a day, but I think it's worth mentioning. Oh, Marilyn, even belated. Marilyn just celebrated her 71st birthday, and I'd like to wish her just a happy oh, birthday. Happy birthday, us. Marilyn. Yes, you are a little brush. <laughs> So we appreciate she's taking up painting and oh, painting with us. You know what I did, guys? What'd you do? I got lost in the painting. Which oh, I did. How did that ever happen? It happens. So what'd I'm you do? Come back and put my blue back. So tell me, what did you mean by you got lost in the painting? So where I had been talking about my shadows, I actually was putting my white for my highlights, and I was like, "What is oh. happening here? I feel very lost in the painting." And the reason I felt lost is I was, and that'll happen sometimes. Well, so it's so that explains why you're just painting out what you just did. That's oh. what I'm doing. Sometimes you'll be like, wait, what am I doing? And then you go, oh, that's not what I was trying to do. Mm. Silly me. So I've got to actually move this light color actually where I would have light colors. Silly, silly me. So see, sometimes these little moments are super helpful when you're trying to do a painting, having it gridded in. Having your reference nearby so you don't get lost. You know, um, sometimes there's a misconception among new artists that um, we're supposed to be doing things from memory. And that's uh, what being creative or artistic is about. But that's actually not true. You really, really do need references when you're working. Um, even artists that work non-objectively, if you really talk to them about their practice, there are influences, things that they are looking at. To help inform their art so it's always a good idea come here and make sure that this is right there along that little line and along here because we'll catch some little highlights up on these little curves of petal there we go all right so that can dry mm. and we can put in our darker color which is going to be pretty easy to do we're going to take our red and let's add a little of our blue to it and you can see it deepens it and that's going to be our shadow take it in small amounts because the blue can really overwhelm the red very quickly very very quickly but you can see that becomes our shadow space oh come up and you can see how even the aqua underneath is helping it helping darken this red a bit a little more of it right there, thicker, a little bit of the blue. Can you see that? And then we'll just, everywhere that there's a shadow, we're going to put this darker value. There we go. And I am, this is our first layer of this.
we will be coming in and doing a few. So it's just important to get it in. All right. So we've got a dark color going there. I'm going to, while I have it, kind of start putting a dark color up here. So again, this is our vermilion with a little bit. Maybe even be a little bit more of our primary blue. I love this style of poppy painting that's real close on the poppy and shows all the different little cascades and highlights that could be happening. Makes me super happy. I'm going to come along here because these have these little delicate edges and I definitely don't want to lose those little fragile, sweet edges that we get on Poppy. And a little bit here. Right. And a little bit maybe here. For sure. Trying to see where we're at. There's a little dark value right here. And then again here. And we will be layering up. We will, we will. I'm going to go even a little darker. Right here. This is sort of a folded petal. That'll be fun to talk about. And there you go. Go even a little darker. All right. Now, and again, we're blocking. We're building up these layers of color, even though we're painting loosely. I come right here. Make sure I capture all of that shadow that's happening now while this is having a dry we can start talking a little bit about our stem which we can take a little of our brown and our green and just start by painting that little stem in and i have to remember not to bend my body Maybe a little bit of a leaf that comes out there. So that's in pretty good. Now I'm going to dry this because I want the layers under here to be very stable when I start layering loosely the next on. Sometimes in acrylic, you are always battling stages of dryness. So sometimes you need to work wet into wet to get a soft blend. But other times you're dry brushing or painting loosely over something and then it needs to be dry. So part of what you're learning as a student is knowing when those two states are happening and how you can maximize your results. Hmm. I'm going to grab my hair, hair dryer and give it a dry. And John's going to say hi to you. Hello, everybody. Good to see you guys. Thank you for coming and hanging out. I love seeing all the paintings you guys have been doing. It's been really, really great um, to see all of the artwork that's been coming out from you guys. It's just, uh, can't tell you how wonderful it has been um to just see it all i just it, i don't have enough words for it i think i gotta find your aunt oh, where is your button there it, is, there it is i just i i have so enjoyed seeing all of the artwork that's been coming in that's how much so people have grown uh how much you have been doing through this it's just been yeah it's really been amazing. good for me i'm on a journey too i'm actually looking forward to coming to the end of this and we'll all kind of look back together and compare other journeys and and really give this a give this an examination i think that's going to be super fun now in this one i'm going to grab some pure red and start to fill in some of those spaces or maybe the pure pure red would be super appropriate before getting into some of the more yellow reds And that's always a fun thing. Look at that, we're getting some pop, aren't we? Fun stuff. And then we also, it, this is an interesting one because it's got a little fold in the petal. 
Mm -hmm. So painting that little fold, I'm actually really looking forward to. Like, how are we going to get that? You know, at the top of this, I'm going to come in and. And I think maybe we'll go the magenta uh, vermilion, where we mix the ver magenta and the vermilion, because I think they make such an interesting color together. There it is. I like that very much. And we're going to just come into where the shadow is. And what the shadow is, is the petal over here um, being reflected. Isn't that sort of interesting? Mm -hmm. and, then the, and then how that light is going. So pulling up that poppy, our pop and poppy. This will stay quite dark, I think. And just trying to make sure that as I work, I'm paying attention to what I'm actually seeing. Now, I can come in and grab quite a lot of my yellow. Start to talk about right here. Actually, I might even rinse out. I want as, as clear of a color as I can. So I'm going to take this to my red. There we go. And this will be also about coming back and catching some of those little tiny shadows. That's how we're going to get the, the crinkling that we're looking to get. That we're building up on. But we got to block it in, right? If we're going to paint it loosely, we to block it in. And what I mean by blocking it in is getting the overall fields of color and then maybe coming back and drilling in on the essential details. And you can see that lightening up underneath really helped us lo not lose that luminosity because yellows tend to be very transparent. Why is that? The nature of the pigment. And Every guess, pigment has like a property and that's sort of the property of the yellow. And, and I guess that actually you would kind of want yellow to be transparent too, because imagine like, imagine if you had a yellow that covered like titanium white. Would be a problem. It'd just be like, bong, that'd be the powerful yellow. It would be. It Have would to make be. some custom power yellow. It covers like titanium white. All right, come back into like. Some darker red here, maybe, and let's talk about little shadows that could be happening. You're really into this, Poppy. I'm into it. I'm super into it. This is this is like this is I love doing this. I you guess what is I've, what it is. You know what I've seen the last couple days? You've switched from you know being focused on the daily journey to falling back into the oh yeah we're just painting today yeah i i think it's uh i think it's really happening for me right now i'm bring, taking another bit of my dark color because i want to really make sure that this is very rich down here as we're talking about these little shadows how we're doing catching that There's this really wonderful sort of thing that's happening here. So I'm going to do a weird thing. I'm going to grab some green and some red. You can see that makes quite a dark. I want to get this dark bit here. Oh, there it is. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I'm talking about that. And then I'm going to get that in there again, right here in the fold of the petal. Maybe along that. And then here we go there, and then another little bit there. So pulling in some of those darker values really helps us. And shade this, so holding the little petal up. 
And then you can just come and get a little bit of that green and then blend those two spaces sort of together. So you see that where there's a transition. We're seeing that little bit pulled up. So we want to just know that it's there and it's, it's just slightly different. And I grabbed a little of that yellow and red. See, I'm just lightening that petal so we can see it. Get into here with some interesting reds. And we're going to really be working our red, right? Yep. A little magenta in there. Let's really think about what we're looking at. So this comes back here. This also is a bit in shadow, but has different values going on. And you can always come back into your shadow area and help define little bits of the flower that might be in deeper value. See how we just did? So where you need to you can. Where it might be more exaggerated. Like we're going to come here and load up and make some of these more exaggerated shadow colors. Where do you see them? I feel like it comes right through here. And we definitely have one right there. A little bit at the edge of that. Not so much there, and some right here. Now, in the front, we definitely have some of these little intense shadows. Along that top. And you want to show how some of that is, right? How is that? That was the craziest noise. Are we being invaded by outer space? Oh, I think some. So, <laughs> what was no? that? It sounded like either the wind blew the door open or. Oh, okay. That was the crazy noise. I'm like, hey. I don't know what that was. So, what you see, I'm doing is I'm coming along here and I'm just trying to catch those little shadows, those little kind of downbeat bits. And come back up with some red here. Look at that. Try to show this a little bit more clearly is coming through that spot. So that, I think that's always interesting for me as a challenge is trying to make sure that I'm capturing. Those You're approaching elements. your 23 minute mark. Are we? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> just letting you know. <laughs> Thank you. It's the, you know. We like, are, we do have kind of a goal, right? To It's it's a goal to remind you that you got to keep your posture good. You know? We've got to do it. We're And we're trying to make sure that we're working from right here. That nice part of the fold. There we go. So now I can come right into here and I get a little of my yellow into this just to brighten it. I may have to exaggerate some of this to get it to pop because of the nature of the mixes. And I will. I will not go until that leaf is a glow. Mm. So what I might do is try to take out some yellow and a little bit of my white. Come in here and add these little highlights. Mm. Oh, that's not terrible, but it might be better. I'm lightly brushing this. See how that's how I'm getting it done? This will be your this will be the trick here is how light can we keep the pressure? There's a little magenta. See how that's working. Ooh, that's nice. So 
So I just grab a little magenta there to pull that in. Back into my yellow. right here the trick is i've got to get these values up enough let me dry this so my paint is sticking well okay because i'm getting close there we go so remember to use low heat no heat if at all if you can when drying your uh, uh your acrylic paintings heat can soften them up and can speed color shift and things so i'm gonna Keep do a little work on my stem just real fast I take a little of my brown and my green and I'll grab some yellow. A little white. I'm gonna just make sure I come here and talk about a bit of the highlight that would be on that stem. I'm gonna grab my pink, my magenta, maybe a smidge of the white. The magenta is sort of a cool color, and I want to pull this petal out from what it's in front of, but I don't want it to be lost. So, right here, maybe up here. Sometimes it's a good way to talk about those spaces where you're trying to say, hey, this is a separate space. Like we're coming right here, like we're trying to talk about this separate set of petals from that. And I think that helps pull them apart from each other, doesn't it? So I'm really liking the magenta as a solution there because it's cool in nature. It's got cool bias. And in my arsenal, it's very helpful. I think it's interesting how you just, you went rogue and made purple. Uh, it's actually a red, right? It's just a cool bias red. Trying to make sure that we... A red by any other name is a purple. <laughs> okay, could be. I'll add a little blue to that to make that really kind of true. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, that's what I like. So today I'm, I'm... Whenever you're doing an exercise like this where you have... You know, it's one thing to have 20 reds, right? <laughs> And to pop it, you know, you've got some pyrrol, you've got some cad red, you've got the cad red light, and you're trying to create some drama, right? But, you know, all you've got is a limited palette. You've really got to work some of these other elements, like yellow. And there's this little petal that comes up here, and that's what I've got to pull out. There we go. That's the highlight that I've got to talk about. And this one comes down here a bit. Ah, there we go. Might be easier to get the shadows back in from here. Really, really want it to show through. Quite a lot of a highlight right there. So just thinking, I'm just looking for places to pop a highlight and where you've got a plate, you've got a plate. All right, a little white into that and exaggerate that. You know what we're doing? Yeah. Pulling that little space out. Come back with some of my red. Come up and then just pull that in there. Interesting. Very fun and interesting. Get those little little bits of cool. Pop that red.
See how we're doing? I do. We're just building it up. Just layer on layer. Just till I find it. Because what are we always looking for? We're just looking for our painting. We're looking to create a flower that we feel, you know, is that. I this like a, that with the purple. We're all quiet towards the end of the poppy. I know. Well, it's just, it's sort of entertaining it's to a, watch come in is what it is. I really like this experience, if that makes sense. It's so calming. It is super calming. I'm adding my blue to my magenta to get my purple, and that's what I'm kind of using here. Coming here, making these little upward strokes with this deep kind of blue-purple, which is wonderful. Put that into this right here so we find that shadow red. See that right there? It's almost like a wine color. Let's see if we can... Create some crinkle. Create crinkle. Yeah, we need some crinkling. Always come in and help to find that. This is our crinkle color. There we go. And I'm seeing it. You can always, you know, get back uh, from your art a bit and see if you're seeing it. Just looking for all the little places that I can see shadows to get that little crinkly bit in. Crinkle, crinkle. You know, and I feel like I could take that, my purple here, and just red it up. Still feels like this could be much more dramatic. You guys are seeing that? Like it is on the reference I like the drama of oh, yeah. that shadow getting there I'm rinsing out very thoroughly and I'm gonna take my cad yellow and a little bit of my magenta If they'll give me, that's still too muted. So what I'm looking for is an orange, uh, a yellow, you know, a red that's just warmed with the yellow. But isn't creamy. So it's not completely lost. What we're playing with so i know i get quiet but sometimes i'm also thinking <laughs> i'm like oh what's happening here i gotta think a little bit about what i'm seeing let me dry this i keep doing that i reverse some buttons so that's all that's happened is that I've got all sorts of new controls back here behind the scenes that I really enjoy. It's like a spaceship back here. I'm going to put out a little more of my red and then I'm going to do this one last layer and then I'm going to accept it as like this is where I took it. So it's where it, I like it. I guess I'm signing with my black. Are you? <laughs> yeah. That's what the, the last unused <laughs> color. <laughs> well, you can all, you, you never know. Like you can always like maybe end up needing black. So. Sometimes you have to be really aware. Emily would like to know a, it's a really good question. Something do. I, I want to know about. Okay. She asked a good question. When when do you know to deviate from the reference photo and just go rogue and make it purple? So if the palette I'm working with, right? Because like the again, if you have a twenty reds, 
you know, pretty easy to do, right? If I had some alizarin and uh, high roll and a little cat, we can just really, really play. But when you're working on a limited palette, then you have to think about like the color theory of it. And then you start going, well, what's cool and still in the red family, right? We're talking about the hue. And the magenta picked up and pushed a little bit to the red side. So it's the red violet gives us that cool shadow without taking the reds out of our piece. Gotcha. Because you want to lose the red in your poppy, right? That seems counterintuitive. Seems silly. It does, doesn't it? Like, dude, I, I like painted this because I like color red. And all I wanted to do is be the color red. And so that's what I'm doing here is just making sure things that should be red are distinctly maybe red. That's what I'm thinking about, even though I'm on a limited palette. Now, how I'm gonna finish this, I do like that yellow white to represent like very hot sunlight. You can see that sort of happening right here. Mm. So I'm gonna rinse out thoroughly and take a little of my yellow and my white quite a lot and I'm going to warm it with the yellow. It's still white but I'm going to warm it. I'm going to come along some of these little petal edges and catch enough sunlight on it. I'm just trying to get the edge of my brush here. So however lightly I have to touch some of it just to help me see what's happening. So again, you're just the white and a little bit of yellow. You can come along these little petals and pull some of that down and it'll kind of make it seem like just a little extra sunlight maybe caught that. And you can use that where the reference maybe shows you, you can see some hot spots, can't you, on the piece if you really, really look. Yeah. And don't miss the hot spots because the hot spots will make the piece actually work. When you're trying to find where a piece is, don't miss your hot spots. Put just a little bit of a hot spot right here. Maybe right there. All right. I think I'm happy now. Yeah? Yeah. I think I'm pretty happy too. I'm not happy that, with that little flower. Not that it's like my decision on when the beginning begins or ends. <laughs> I just Hopefully they're control. happy. Yeah. That's that's who needs to be happy. Yeah. It's like you I, guys. they tell me when to start and stop the program. So Right. How are you guys doing? Are you loving each of these being such a different little journey, such a different little exploration? I can say for sure they are. There's lots of comments on how much their people are enjoying this. Cinnamon doesn't get to see the chat. So sometimes I got to, well, she does now after the show. That's right. You and I often come by and read what everybody has to say. So she does get to see it. You can leave a message for her right now, or you can leave it in the comments down below because she does come by and read them all the time. And I in do. the mornings with our coffee, she we generally come through here and she'll read me like, she, she'll read some to me and we'll go through and like do them just because it's our thing. I don't know. So just to leave you guys with this thought, remember that you can use purples down here to increase that depth. You don't just have to add black. You can use that. Don't forget to hit those highlights. So as you're doing all these reds and yellows and things, right? So say you had real cad red and real cad yellow instead of vermilion and you're having an easy time getting your pops of oranges. Still don't skip that little highlight on top of the petals because that's that contrast, that pop is going to help you a lot in getting that look of the piece that you're trying for. Mm. All right. Yeah, that, oh, that looks nice. Yeah. So, ah, day nine, tomorrow is gonna be a fun day. That's day 10. The um, videos, the prep work is already there waiting for you. John will tell you about it in our end screen. Mm. Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I wanna see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.